Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. The very fresh release of the Broadway Limited in scale Y6B is hitting store shelves. So we're gonna take a look at these Paragon 4 locomotives. They feature a dual decoder with DC and DCC and sound on that Rolling Thunder where you can have an outside source for a subwoofer and a receiver and you get that trackside bass experience. So with that said, let's get into the review of the Broadway Limited Norfolk and Western Y6B locomotives next. Clear box here, premium in scale locomotive on the front, Rolling Thunder Paragon 4 logo. They switched to white not too long ago, Broadway Limited on the back, in scale dual mode on the side, and again a Paragon 4 logo. Once you pull off the clear top, there's a flap, and the way I pull these out of the box is I use the plastic as a cradle to pull the locomotive out until it's out of the box and then I look at other aspects of the box. Now there is a plastic brace in here that's holding that box. You can see it right there. It is clear but behind here it's like a little secret door. There's a compartment with traction tires and a bell and then behind the secret door if you will is a thank you little flyer here you can pause and read if you're blowing up to full 1080p you can read that pretty easily it talks about dc operation and dcc operation and more information on that side about downloading the complete owner's manual and then there's a cheat sheet that i often use for reviews 28 functions again you can pause if you want to see detail of that uh, packed into an in-scale decoder and more information on the other side that uh, may be mirrored. No, it's slightly different. But anyway, let's look at the locomotive now. Now I unboxed the most colorful example of the Y6B that I have from this order. But as you look in the front, and when I zoom in, a lot of people remark on Broadway locomotives, they think it's HO scale, especially when I'm zoomed way in, but this is indeed in scale. And you've got the smoke box door, with the rivet detail, the Norfolk and Western placard on the front, grab irons, you've got your pilot, LED headlight on this. And as we move along, you can see the sand dome, boiler dome, smokestack, the side rod detail and drivers, along with some under the platform plumbing here. This is a walkway platform. You got safety valves, a bell back here, now speaking of those safety valves, I've zoomed in a little bit more. Those are cast brass safety valves. There's also uh, this whole boiler uh, shell is die cast, which helps with the traction. Broadway Limited always known for their pulling power on HO and in scale. There's also uh, traction tires on two axles, which helps with the pulling power as well. And I can show bottom there. I've been asked to show that before. As we work our way in the back, there's also a cast brass dynamo generator there that helps uh, supply power uh, by from the steam. It converts the steam into power. And there's a tuned brass bell that you can see right there. And you have another one, a little better view there. There's another one in the package. So as we work our way back to the tender and the cab, you see the trailing trucks, the grab irons, there's glazed window uh, detail, so the cab window is glazed. Gives it a nice little appearance uh, of a little reflection. You've got fixed cab roof vents that you can see here and here. And if you turn and look just right, you can even see what appears to be some boiler backhead detail. And then the tender. The tender has... Uh, basically a Buckeye style tender on it and it has roller bearing uh, journal details there's 
Uh, this is a 22 eye tender, so you got rivet details like crazy going up and down. Water hatches up here, and uh, that dog house, I think they call it coal load. Crew access ladder in the rear and rear LED light. And as we turn this way, you can see more of the same detail kind of shooting up the side of the locomotive there. So try to peek that out a bit so you can see the back of the cab windows as well. So looking at the bottom of the tender, you can see coupler cup bar. You can see air hose, accessory hose with silver tipped ends. And these couplers here are Micro Trains compatible couplers. And those are on the front and rear of the locomotive. A little better view of the coal load and some of the detail on the locomotive itself. As we turn this way, you can really see some of that cast in detail, including just uh, plumbing going up here, valves, and the rivet detail on the smoke box. On the firebox, it's pretty smooth. Uh, you know, a lot of fireboxes have rivet detail, but the Y6Bs were smooth. I don't remember if it's a shroud or what, but there's a few access points on the firebox but uh, overall pretty smooth so that is accurate for the Y6B from what I've seen in photos and we're back to the front here looking down the side of the locomotive it's not really in focus uh, on the front there so I'll center that back up so you can take a good look at the front but once again those micro trains compatible couplers on the front another air silver tip to air hose and some cross bracing air on the pilot and number boards on each side of the LED. And even there's little class lights mounted there that are non-operational. So pretty cool locomotive overall. And cramming all that detail on in has got to be a task, but uh, looks pretty good. All right, next we have 2191, which ran, I think, later than a lot of the Y6Bs and 2199. You can see that coupler cut lever a little more prevalently because it's positioned outwards right there. Uh, but you also have these different schemes compared to the blue one I was showing. These are the traditional Norfolk and Western. These are not a fantasy scheme. Uh, these operated just as you see them here. Uh, 2199 lets you see one. And a white hair from I don't know what. But <laughs> 2199 also lets you see uh, the detail of the brass casting with the safety valves up front a little better it really sticks out there you've got the whistle right here and the bell right there so you can also see the rivet detail going across the cab roof there pretty easy and on this side the 2191 looks good as well just a different uh, total cab number but a lot of the same detail so this is a quick look at just a few schemes for you in case you needed a little help with imagination well for those wondering these are about eight and a half inch long models in n-scale which is pretty impressive but there were big steam locomotives now f9 is the extended startup so we're going to go ahead and do that so you can listen to the sounds of the paragon 4 decoder So as you can hear there, you hear the crew getting in, steaming it up, valves being turned. If I hit F0, you'll hear the dynamo spin up as the headlight turns on. So you hear the dynamo spool up and then the headlight turns on, which is actually something they program in the decoder which mimics the real thing because the headlight doesn't just come on. The dynamo's got a spin-up in energy and 
convert that steam to electricity to turn on the headlight. Alright, let's listen to some sounds with the F1 being the bell. That sound is really good uh, for an in-scale locomotive. I don't hear any resonance or basically rattle. I think they call it baffle rattle. I don't hear that. Uh, this sounds better than some of my HO locomotives in a lot smaller package. Here's Bell, or we did Bell, let's hear whistle. Now the whistle is quillable. You can hold it down for longer periods on F2 and get some changes in the sound. So, just a different press of F2 will get that. Now F22 is the alternate whistle. I'll go ahead and play that. I think my personal preference is the whistle that's on standard F2. It's only cutting off because I'm pressing it too quick, but if you hold it and then let off, it's fine. Uh, but if you double press it, it will cut off, uh, which is just, you know, you're interrupting the decoder command. <clears throat> F3 is rear light on and off. We'll go over the lighting later. Four and five have no function. Six is dynamo sound, which we already heard when the headlight spooled up. Eight is volume Mute, 9 is startup shutdown, which we already covered. 10 and 11 have no functions, uh, along with 12. 13 is grade crossing function. So the grade crossing horns, uh, whistle sequence, I should say, plays on F13 by itself. 14 station sounds. And 15 is yard radio chatter. Permission to depart. Be advised, switches on the north end might be against you, so go out looking out for switches. That's a Rajo. 16 is maintenance chatter. They're, uh, they're trying to let you know something about that broken rail in the yard there. Over. All right, well, we'll be standing by. Over. Thank you. 17 is radio check chatter. Eighteen's city radio chatter. Nineteen's agriculture radio chatter. Yeah, what time you usually you head for the barn over? Twenty is industrial sounds. Twenty one's lumber mill sounds. Twenty two second horn toggle we already went over. Twenty three's track sound chargle. So track sounds when you move it you'll hear kind of the clicky clack of the rail, so that's a toggle on twenty three. Twenty four has no function, twenty five is the long whistle. Twenty-six is macro playback. You you can see my video on macro and micro. I don't have a uh, macro and uh, recording and playing it back. I don't have the track space to do a sequence. But basically, when you hit F twenty-seven, it records a sequence. Whatever you want to do, bell, whistle, <clears throat> you know, moving the locomotive, and then twenty-seven stops that recording again, and then twenty-six will play that back. And twenty-eight is brake squeal. So. I'll do 28 real quick, and you have to kind of hear it move along there. I want you to see the rear tender light here, so I was showing that real quick. 
I take $21.99 here and look at slow speed control. So we'll just go back one speed step out of 128. And that's on the MRC Prodigy Elite system, which I use for in scale testing. Pretty smooth at one speed step. We'll go ahead and move up to two. Moving along even more, I'm going to zoom in on those drivers for you. Camera really doesn't want to. There we go. And I'm going to stop. We're going to go forward by three speed steps here. Check out the motor control going forward because one direction doesn't always give us an accurate representation of whether a locomotive is going to be gliding along or not. But there's one speed step going forward. You get a good look at all of the detail again, and you can see it's moving very smoothly at one speed step. So pretty cool there. And there's two speed steps. And three speed steps. So very smooth drive. So I've got my AccuTrack 2 speedometer. It is set to in scale miles per hour. We're going to see how slow this goes in scale miles per hour. Now I've done testing on and off with in scale over my 14 years of product reviews, especially the last several with the speedometer. And this seems to be the slowest moving in scale steam locomotive at the smoothest. Uh, rating so kind of the mixture and it looks like 2.1 scale miles per hour and so it's pretty smooth at that slow speed control on an end scale locomotive there's not any jerkiness or anything at one speed step so pretty good but if you don't like that you can still change those CVs to anything you want so a couple things we didn't cover in scalers always tell me to cover minimum radius on this is 9.75 inches it will operate on code 55, 70, and 80 rail. It's got uh, prototypical sounds from the Y6B. You get the die cast body, rubber tires. A lot of people ask that I show the traction tires on Steam. That's a new request. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You can see which tires do have the traction. It's the back pair of each set of drivers have the traction tires. You can see the speaker at the bottom of the tender. So this also has added capacitance. That's part of the Paragon 4 so that if there's a track interruption, you're going to be able to uh, go through that without a problem on dirty track. And this track has had some issues with other locomotives before. Another thing is pro lighting mode. Um, this, the two sides I showed you at the beginning of the video, there's pro lighting mode, which you can operate additional lighting on the tender. You can change the code or rule 17 lighting on the headlight and some other features of pro lighting mode that you can read about. Also, uh, when you hit reverse, you get to hear the Johnson bar. So that's pretty cool as well. It's blowing off some steam right now, so a little hard to hear, but... But that's neat, and then you've got your uh, reset buttons that you can use to return everything to factory settings. So lots of different features in this. I've covered as many as I could. I don't know if you're going to believe me, but you'll have to take my word for it because I could not video this by myself, and nobody's here to help me. But basically, this thing had a pull test of 2.25 ounces. That is equivalent to an HO scale locomotive. Uh, pulling 30 plus cars. So this is going to be able to pull whatever you need. As I expected, Broadway Limited's pulling power is bar none. Nobody can come close to it. So I uh, just wanted to mention that before we wrap up the review and mention that uh, the in-scale market is firmly in Broadway Limited's control, in my opinion, because you've got sound, capacitance, pulling power, detail, you name it, it's here. And Broadway Limited is taken in scale by storm. So we'll leave you with a run by and we'll see you next time right here on the channel. Take care.